Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Literally thousands of you have been recommending this ACDC song. And I just read the lyrics for the first time and I gotta say, I'm appalled. It seems just morally wrong, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and trust your recommendations. So let's get to it. feels like a bad boy song. Maybe that's because reading the lyrics, I thought this was going to be like a bad boy song. But also that initial just aggression from the very first note, sort of the shock of it. I wasn't really ready for the sound yet, I think. It made me jump. So back to the beginning one more time. <laughs> oh, they build up the silence. That's part of it. Ah! Bad to the bone. Awesome. I feel like we just entered a chorus there, right? We had a very, very clear buildup to it. Uh, let's go back and talk about Bon Scott's vocals. I think he has some incredible signature style and he breaks rules in like tons of the best ways. So I'm gonna pause a whole bunch and we're just gonna dig into them. Here? Too early? I don't know this song, guys. <laughs> I picked this spot that looked approximately like the right location, okay? Okay. I love the uh, thing in the background. Uh, it's, right, it's not really what some people might call phonation, but it is a vocalization. So I, I like having a sound that just expresses some sort of uh, intense emotion in the voice and that definitely has got some uh, prickles on my skin just from that <sighs> loud breathing. Um, bon Scott is at times so unspecific with his pitch. Anytime you go to a singing teacher, they'll tell you, okay, you need to sing on pitch, right? <laughs> and then Bon Scott's like, <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I love it. It's just, it's like, it's like I'm going to toss all those rules out the window. So we're going to talk about a couple more things, but I'll point out some more specific places exactly where he's like, yeah, do we really need the pitch there? With the so even high school head, he's, there's, there's kind of a pitch there, but he's sliding so much through it, I don't even know what pitch I would write down on a paper at that point. Ridiculous. The blues. <laughs> it's partly because he does set up quite a few pitches with exactness that when he gets to one where he's hanging out just underneath it or is gonna slide everywhere around it, he tells us, the vicinity very clearly, but then it's like he wants to erase all preconceptions that we ever made. Another rule that he breaks is he puts it just through his nose. There's uh, actually a lot of heft in the sound. And I don't often expect somebody with a ton of heft to then send it through their nose. I, I'm accustomed to heft 
having tons of loft and some focus, and that gets you opera, right? But Hatch that then goes like right straight through the nose. It's got so much sass in it. It's got so much style um, and so much snark. Just amazing. The interesting thing I was thinking about as I was listening to it again this time is that it sometimes sounds like Bon Scott's uh, resonance. Like it, it's happening here. Like you hear the sound here and I hear a width in it too, but really a lot of it coming through here, a lot of focus there. But those, uh, the breath sounds that we're hearing, we're actually getting a phonation that is down here. And this, it sounds like it's almost resonating in this area, in the pharynx essentially. And there's a crazy contrast that is being drawn between the two by putting them side by side in this mix. Cool. I think if you were to take like his exact vocal production, if we could somehow mimic everything that he's doing in his vocal tract, including, you know, this, whatever he's doing with a soft palate, probably a lot of depression of it to get it to go through his nose. If we took that and we put it in a woman. We would hear something that we would associate as a witch. Truly, truly, truly. This is a very witchy kind of sound, but it's got that heft behind it. And, and, uh, and it's got more, it's just like a sort of masculine depth that when it's put with that, you get the sound that's Bon Scott and that everyone's come to love. It's got a gnarliness to it. It's got a nastiness to it. I also, I really like the way you get extra voices on Dundort Cheap. I think that was clever. That moment actually sounds like it, almost a little tube and throat singing happening, right? It sounds like I'm getting a little false chords and they're with your true chords. Whoa, whoa, did y'all borrow some tube and throat singing technique? have ourselves a, a ball, maybe a, a big ball. Shouting back to that incredible, uh, hilarious, hilarious song. That was a great example also of uh, capitalizing on pitch unspecificity. That, I think that his singing style is just gonna continue to come back to this idea of, yeah, I've established where a pitch could be, but then I like to erase what your conception of that is at this point. It over and over and over. And I imagine that anybody who wants to sound like Bon Scott is going to have to not only learn how to sing on pitch really, really well first and sing through their nose, but then they're going to have to get away from pitch and like break free. So many people are just trained to have it ingrained in them. Blues singers will often make that area a little more gray. And I like that. That's one of the great things about the stylization of blues. So I feel like bringing that into this rock and roll really helps. But man, if you guys, if you want to sound like Bon Scott, I feel like it's like you have to get that basic foundation first. So you're not going to hurt yourself, right? And so you know what rules you're breaking, but then you have to have <laughs> the guts to break them. This is 
This is a bold song. Oh. Talk about how you should resolve conflict, or maybe how I believe people should resolve conflict. You know, I think it's nice to have a conversation, uh, a, a real clear one, where you have clear boundaries that you set for yourself and for the other person. And if you know those boundaries are being broken, you can just go separate ways, or uh, you know, resolve it. Don't just call somebody to like take care of it for you. Anyhow, this is this is. <laughs> it's so it's like catchy and it gives you this feeling of like yeah I can get away with anything listening to the song but at the same time there, there's this piece of me that's like mm, grow up resolve your own conflicts anyhow <laughs> sorry that's all How do you do that sound? Because it just gets me. Mm. Oh, goodness. I need to try and get that sound way better. I like that sound. There is so much in common with the guitar tone quality here and Bon Scott's voice. Maybe that's what we really should talk about is not trying to figure out it from like a technical standpoint, how to get to that sound, but rather go sound like a, a gnarly guitar. That's, that's how we get his sound. So much in common. Wow, that's awesome. Wow, that was such a cool guitar solo. The tone at the beginning was very much, you know, I think close to Bon Scott's tone, but then as it evolved, obviously, I think that'd be very, very difficult to get all those pitches unless you yodel, oh my gosh, Oh my gosh, give me somebody who sounds like Bon Scott and Yodels too. <laughs> I need to hear that person. Um, but uh, I'm going to go back to that again because that was just so satisfying. Yeah, like when it starts going a little crazy right there. This feels very Beethoven now, but then goes off the deep end. <laughs> his lyrics are catchy the delivery of them is just so unapologetic i love the way he's nuts for example he goes into all of the consonants in there and bites it off it it's uh it, it's telling a story with so much more than just words you want her Very bluesy, right there, in those pictures. <laughs> Yay! Yay, we got a really great little cry in the end of that build up into the chorus here, where he like broke off of a lower register and went into another one, almost like, like the beginning of a yodel, essentially. I love that. Right there! Nice! One more time.
I think it's partly so good and catchy because of all the alliteration in there, but also because of that uh, inclusion of other voices on Dun Dirt Cheap, it encourages an audience to sing along. They definitely are writing music that I feel is not just for the musicians. It is purposefully for audience engagement. A lot of false chords there. And that was just a beautiful, beautiful series of vocal expressions that seemed to really take delight in all kinds of terrible things. Like, oh no, why do I like this song right now? <laughs> it's talking about really awful things being done to other humans, but for some reason it's, it feels like fun because there is so much enjoyment in this the singing of it and the exploring of vocal expression. Oh gosh. Ah. PNT. Oh, back for the hungry chew. This is gonna go smiling side. PNT. Gosh. <laughs> so froggy. Hi, <laughs> Volte. <laughs> ah, we're gonna do that one more time. It just cracks me up. It presents so many uh, conflicting emotions. Against my will, I like the song. I I like it. It it presents something that is pretty awful, but it presents it with like such a smile and a, a feeling of being totally badass, right? It is uh, infatuating, and I don't know that I like that I like it, but I, I'm gonna give you a nice playlist over here of other songs that I'm not sure that I like that I like, but I do like them. Here you go. <laughs> May you fall more in love with music every day.